there's a new king reigning the roost at Broadway's Hamilton. Tony nominee Ewan Morton is the latest talent to take on the role of King George in the smash hit, right off an acclaimed run in the national tour of Hedvig and the Angry Inch. He recently stopped by the studio to give us a scoop on his regal run and his suddenly famous son. Hey, Ewan. Hi. How's it going? Really good, thank you. I'm so excited. You're, you're in Hamilton. You're back on I, Broadway. I am, yeah. And, and you said, I'm not going back to Broadway until I'm in the biggest hit that's ever existed. <laughs> I wish. If I'd said that, I would, yeah. I just, I can't believe, I was off on tour. I was I was away for nine months. I wasn't expecting to come back to New York. Doing an amazing job. Doing it, well, thank playing, you. Playing Hedwig. Thank you. Hedwig and the Age. Show. And I, I was actually, I just signed up for a university uh, in New Mexico. I had rented an apartment in New Mexico. Uh, I'd paid the deposit in New Mexico. To go study what? <laughs> to go study history. Uh, really? Yeah. And then the phone call came. I mean, I, didn't, I had to audition, but the call came to audition, and I hummed and hard and was like, oh, but I really want to go to school. And, and then I got the job, and I thought, are you an idiot? You've got to be doing hell, and you're staying in New York. Now I'm buying an apartment in New York and not leaving and doing my thing online. Everything changed. Everything changed. Everything yeah. changed. Yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy. So I didn't realize you were going to give it all up to be a scholar. I was certainly going to take a break. Take a break. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think uh, there's nothing wrong with expanding one's mind uh -huh. beyond the same thing, which yeah. I've done for a long time. Um, and I think just even having the wherewithal to want to do that has actually given me a fresh look on what I do now. Coming mm -hmm. back and being here and being reminded of what New York, New York is as an actor, yeah. doing Hamilton, maybe I shouldn't leave. Okay, so Hamilton. Yes. Good gig. It's a great gig. People, I'm sure people were very excited. I'm sure your friends and family were like, uh, you're in Hamilton. Uh, that, that's amazing. Uh, yes, yeah. they were, of course. I mean, Everyone's yeah. heard of it. You don't have to explain to right, non-theater people exactly. what it is. Exactly. If you say taboo, they'll go away. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's it's the zeitgeist, isn't it? Did it? Is it here because of the zeitgeist, or is the zeitgeist here because of Hamilton or whatever? You know, yeah. but it sort of was the perfect timing, uh -huh. um, the perfect casting, the first thing that, that's that's cast really colorblind. I hate that. Mm -hmm. I hate that. that phrase, but no, no one is watching the show thinking, why is Jefferson black? Right. Because yeah. it doesn't matter. I mean, it's proved something outside of just what a musical can be. Yep. It's also proved what genuine, talented casting can be, mm -hmm. um, what good actors can do, right. just irrespective of the color of their skin. Right. So I think just being part of that is really exciting. I mean, the show's great and all that other stuff, yeah. but all the stuff that comes behind it, all the stuff that Hamilton stands for, mm -hmm. Um, I'm really proud to be part of. And you're not playing Hamilton? No, no, I'm not, and thank God. He has a <laughs> lot to do. <laughs> you're <laughs> King George. I am the and king. And it's been a great, amazing lineup of actors who have now taken on this None part. of them are British. I'm the first Brit. So you're able to look down on the Americans with a whole different... <laughs> with, with a real sense of disgust. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's funny, uh, you sort of stand there every night and, and, and uh, you know, the show finishes and I, and I always leave the theatre and I think to myself, <laughs> Well, if only you'd kept Britain, things would be much different today. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sense of <laughs> at the end. It, is it as much fun as it looks like? That yes. you, every time you get on stage, you get to sort of, I mean, every moment is a moment. Yeah, I walked into a role that gets at entrance applause even if you're a ca cappuccino monkey. You know, if you <laughs> stuck a monkey in the role and it came out dressed as the king, people would go wild. Um, it, so yes, it's a great feeling, technically speaking, but it's also, it's a challenge in a different way. You have to uh -huh. maintain character mm -hmm. throughout long periods of not being on stage, which I've right. never really done before. And that's yeah. difficult and, and different and something you have to gear your mind and your body toward you're still coming on vocally and emotionally in the same place that you're supposed mm -hmm. to be throughout the three songs. So it's an interesting challenge in ways that I didn't think it would be. Right, but after coming off something like Hedwig, which was mammoth, then you did a nice long run. Yeah, we did nine months. Yeah. And it was on tour, so you also had the sort of mammoth idea of moving every week and, right. go, you know, and going to North Carolina or, or San Diego or whatever you, you Did you went. make local references? In every different city, and yeah. And how we, did you keep track of those? Uh, well, they were get, we were given a slew of information about each city and we would pare it down, me and John and you know, whoever. And you would write them all over the stage? Right? No, no, I just memorize them on the bus and That's crazy. to the next location or on the flight. But Hedwig is a different beast entirely. She has so much to say, and it's not just about what she says right. or how she says, it's just the way she speaks to people. The people I would meet after the show, they were there because Hedvig set them free. Mm. And when people see King George, they're there because he's, you know, he's funny and right. he's the British guy. It's, it's a different feeling, yeah. you know. I'm fulfilling a different purpose here. Mm -hmm. And whilst it's awesome and amazing, it, it's, it, it took some getting used to. 
I first met you 14 years ago. You did. Because that's when you were in rehearsal mm -hmm. for Taboo. That's right. I like to say Taboo, not Taboo. That's I like to do it the British way. Mm -hmm. And I love that show so much. I listen to you sing that role to me all the time. Awesome. You probably don't listen to it. I, I do. I haven't listened to it in a very long time. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> What's your craziest memory of doing that show? Honestly, for me, the whole experience of just coming to America and not having been here before, coming into a job which was playing the lead mm -hmm. on Broadway, mm -hmm. singing in Times Square. I mean, I remember, I think the third time I ever saw Times Square, I was on a stage at that Broadway. Probably on Broadway. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it, with these screens and this yeah. sound and thousands of people. And yeah. I, I was completely mind blown. I, I came with, with sort of no expectations and I, by the time Taboo was over, I realized that I'd found my place. Tony nomination? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Exciting, yeah. Yeah, I just slept with all the right people. It was great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, it's, it's uh, none of that really mattered. I mean, at the time, it was just so devastating what happened to Taboo. Yeah. Taboo was not a bad show. No, I don't care no, what no. any of those it's people say. It's a fantastic said. show. It was a fantastic show. Do you think it show. should come back? I think if it did come back, they'd have to do it right. But I, I have to be honest with, with the fact that because Taboo didn't go well, mm -hmm. um, this is my fourth time on Broadway in 14 years. Yeah. I mean, that, I don't think that speaks to my lack of talent necessarily. Absolutely Although not. I'm a terrible auditioner, right. um, which may have something to do with it. But it's also to do with, you are sometimes marked by your mm. past. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people actually used to say to me, oh, you were so wasted then, you were so high mm. that night, because people thought I was really taking drugs, yeah. which I wasn't doing, Right. <laughs> but that uh, hurt my reputation. So yeah. Taboo for me was an experience of all kinds of things. But the most memorable was the ride and, and the pulling back into the station at the end and wondering what I was going to go on next. But it also really long time. You know, goes to show how, how difficult a career can be and building yeah. a career, yeah. which leads me to my, my final question. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, I see this little boy on all the taxi tops. I know. Y young Sheldon. Yeah. Ian Armitage, your son. Has he? He's your son. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're, he's your son. He is my uh, son. And Isn't he's he having a big Hollywood moment. He is. And what is that like for you as a dad to watch that? Well, Obviously, everyone fell in love with him from his Ian Lips Theater. And Big Little Lies and was his first Lies, big thing. Yes, and he went not his TV He hosted, show. A, he presented an Annie no, he's, he's a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, he's huge. And I think it couldn't happen to a nicer child. Uh, and I would say that even if Ian wasn't my son, genuinely, because he is kind. Generous, uh, giving. He isn't selfish. He isn't mean. He's never had a tantrum in his life, and I mean that never, not once. He's never stood in the street and screamed, mm -hmm. ever. Usually tap dancing. Well, anything. actually, I, I tell the story because this is a, the, the, a mark of this child. He tap danced in Times Square once. I, I don't know. If he's, I don't know why, but he did, and he was with some homeless man and blah blah. And tap danced in Times Square, and he made like five hundred bucks. There you cash. go. <laughs> and he gave it to the homeless man. Oh. When his mom said, what are you going to do with it? He said, well, I don't need any money, do I? I'm going to give it to my friend over here. Uh, it's not, he's not, it's, he doesn't consciously make decisions to be good. He is just naturally good. Right. And I feel like right now, having young, famous people be naturally good, I think could be really good for the rest of us. Right. Um, I say that I'm the first absent father, one of the few absent fathers who's absent because his child is at work. <laughs> I'm, right. I'm never there. Right. Um, so, but he, and he loves me, and he's very supportive of what I do too. Yeah. And it's important to me that he is. That's I, awesome. You know, when I he says it. nice things, I love it too. <laughs> well, we have to let you go, become, yes. the king, become the king. I have to go be the so king. So everyone, uh, go see Hamilton. Yes. I mean, if you can get in. And you, you can get in. There are ways to get, get in. in. Yeah, people wait. I mean, people act. It's it. worth the wait. I've never seen people love theater as much as they love this. Isn't it this. awesome? Yeah, it's really remarkable. And it changed every other theater. Yeah. It wasn't just for Hamilton. Yeah. In the end, they spread it out. Yeah. And it's been, it's changed the great white way. You deserve it. Oh, I'm oh, so thanks. happy for you. Thank you. So everyone, <laughs> you. Uh, check out this guy. Mm, check me out. You and Morton in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Thank you.